A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah made ready to flee to Tarshish away from the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish, paid a fare, and went aboard to journey with them to Tarshish, away from the Lord. The Lord, however, hurled a violent wind upon the sea, and in the furious tempest that arose, the ship was on the point of breaking up. Then the mariners became frightened, and each one cried to his God. To lighten the ship for themselves, they threw its cargo into the sea. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down into the hold of the ship and lay there fast asleep. The captain came to him and said, What are you doing asleep? Rise up, rise up, call upon your God. Perhaps God will be mindful of us so that we may not perish. Then they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots to find out on whose account we have met this misfortune. So they cast lots and thus singled out Jonah. Tell us, they said, what is your business? Where do you come from? What is your country? And to what people do you belong? Jonah answered them, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Now the men were seized with great fear and said to him, How could you do such a thing? They knew that he was fleeing from the Lord because he had told them. They asked, What shall we do with you? That the sea may quiet down for us for the sea was growing more and more turbulent. Jonah said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, that it may quiet down for you, since I know it is because of me that this violent storm has come upon you. Still the men rode hard to regain the land, but they could not, for the sea grew ever more turbulent. Then they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for taking this man's life. Do not charge us with shedding innocent blood. For you, Lord, have done as you saw fit. Then they took Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the seas raging abated. Struck with great fear of the Lord, the men offered sacrifice and made vows to him. But the Lord sent a large fish that swallowed Jonah, and Jonah remained in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Then the Lord commanded the fish to spew Jonah upon the shore. Responsorial Psalm you will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Out of my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the midst of the nether world I cried for help, and you heard my voice. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood enveloped me. All your breakers and your billows passed over me. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Then I said, I am banished from your sight. Yet would I regain look upon your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. My prayer reached you in your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. The priest happened to be going down to that road, but when he saw him, he, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. If God is all-loving and compassionate, then why is there so much suffering and evil in the world? Many agnostics refuse to believe in God because of this seemingly imponderable problem. If God is love, then evil and suffering must be eliminated in all its forms. What is God's answer to this human dilemma? Jesus' parable about a highway robbery gives us a helpful hint. Jesus told this dramatic story in response to a devout Jew who wanted to understand how to apply God's great commandment of love to his everyday life circumstances. In so many words, this religious-minded Jew said, I want to love God as best as I can, and I want to love my neighbor as well. But how do I know that I am fulfilling my duty to love my neighbor as myself? Jesus must have smiled when he heard this man challenged him to explain one's duty towards their neighbor. For the Jewish believer, the law of love was plain and simple. Treat your neighbor as you would treat yourself. The real issue for this believer was the correct definition of who is my neighbor. He understood neighbor to mean one's fellow Jew who belonged to the same covenant with God, made with the people of Israel. To mean one's fellow Jew who belonged to the same covenant which God made with the people of Israel. Up to a certain point, Jesus agreed with his sincere expert, but at the same time, he challenged him to see that God's view of neighbor went far beyond this narrow definition. Jesus told a parable to show how wide God's love and mercy is towards every fellow human being. Jesus' story of a brutal highway robbery was all too familiar to his audience. The road from Jerusalem to Jericho went through a narrow winding valley surrounded by steep rocky cliffs. 
Many wealthy Jews from Jerusalem had winter homes in Jericho. This narrow highway was dangerous and notorious for its robbers who could easily ambush their victim and escape into the hills. No one in his right mind would think to traveling through this dangerous highway alone. It was far safer to travel with others for protection and defense. What does Jesus' story tell us about true love for one's neighbor? First, we must be willing to help even if others brought trouble on themselves through their own fault or negligence. Second, our love and concern to help others in need must be practical. Good intentions and showing pity or empathizing with others are not enough. And lastly, our love for others must be as wide, as inclusive as God's love. God excludes a no one from his care and concern. God's love is unconditional, so we must be ready to do good to others for their sake, just as God is good to us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may your love always be the foundation of my life. Free me from every fear and selfish concern that I may freely give myself in loving service to others, even to the point of laying my life down for their sake. Amen. Amen.